Hey coaches, welcome to the stream today. My name is Coach Mackey. This is the first time you've uh, seen me. And in today's live stream, hopefully it goes well, we're going to be talking about different ways to run the Y stick and the Y corner. Now, the first way I like to do it is I like to run the Y stick with push motion. Now, I don't know if a lot of y'all do push motion or anything, but what I mean by push motion is I like to take the tailback and push him to the side that we're running the stick concept from. So as you can see right here, I have got our two by two set and we are going to be running this stick concept to the right. Now the way I, I set things up is we run the stick concept to the left or the right depending on who we tag. We can tag the Y or the F and that is what I usually do. I like to tag it either way. So. Right now, we're going to run the Y stick with the push motion. So just to let y'all know what we do, backside, if this side has the stick concept, then backside, I like to do hitches. And the reason why I like to do hitches is I'm not that good at telling people how to run slants. I really haven't gotten that good at coaching up the slant route but I, I, I think that I'm really good at coaching up the hitches. So that's why I put hitches backside. You, you can do anything you want backside, but hitches works for me. So these have got hitches to the left. To the front side, we have got our stick concept. Now for those of y'all that don't know the stick concept, this is how I teach this for the Y. So he's, we're playing the game off the guy, whoever's head up to inside the Y. So right now, let's say this backer, usually with the teams we play like to play, cheat it in so they can add to the box. He likes to take an inside step to the inside shoulder of that linebacker. And I don't teach steps like one, two, three, four. I teach on the outside foot because I think that actually works better. So this Y, he is taking two steps on that right foot. So his front foot is lined up closer to the ball, so it would be his left foot. And he's taking on his second step. So he's taking it one, two. On that second one, he is planning and his eyes are going straight to the quarterback. He wants to see the quarterback. Throwing it up just like we do settle up a noose. Now, outside release. He's got a, this R. He has to release outside. It's very important. He can't come inside because if he comes inside, then this quarter can see the flat route or the shoot route. Now what I mean by push is when the quarterback, he's going to give an indicator. I don't know what the indicator is for you. For us, it's set. And on set, the, the running back will go into motion. So the quarterback comes up, he goes set, running back's gone. I don't want the quarterback waving or doing anything like that. I want him to be focusing on the defense. So he's pushing, he's saying set, running back goes, and then on go, the running back is now running his shoot route. And the reason why I like to do this, and this is one change up than what we normally do, this causes a reaction. Not so much in here, but this guy right here, because this is who we're playing the game off of. The motion now, he's most of the time when we first run it, this guy bumps out, it's a nice easy window for the Y and the quarterback. If this guy just sits here, well now the running back actually has some space on him, has some leverage, the quarterback all he has to do is just catch, turn, and just dump the ball off. And that's how, that's one variation that we do. Now, I know a lot of y'all have been emailing me asking me why do I show some things within the pistol, and I'm starting to go toward the pistol. Toward the last four or five games of last season, we lined up in the pistol, and it opened up everything for us because now defenses, and y'all know this, can't key on where that back is. We still run our same stuff, but now he's just right behind the quarterback and he can go either left or right. So in this example, we could push the quarterback, I mean the running back to the left and the F, now we can run F stick. So that's one variation I like to do with the push motion. And I see that we have 19 coaches in here. Coaches, I appreciate it. Um, if you find this helpful or you like anything about this, please give a thumbs up. I, that lets me know that I'm what I'm talking about. And go ahead and, and comment in the chat. Coach Diego, hello, sir. How are you doing? You doing all right on this beautiful day or night, I should say. Um, so that's, that's the first variation. Now, the second variation is I like to tag the Y cross with our inside zone 
or not the Y cross, I'm sorry, the Y corner with our inside zone. So let me go ahead and draw this up for you. So again, backside. So what we would call is we would call this uh, inside zone to the left. I know some people call that three. Some people call it Zelda. I, th I think um, uh, the end zone, they call it, uh, what is it? Zorro odd, and odd says go into the left. So anyways, what we would do is this would be inside zone to the left paired with the Y stick. Now for the wide receivers, every, they're just running Y stick. So Y, I'm sorry, corner. So we keep everything the same in our quick game. So if the Y's got the corner route, which for us is just a two steps. Let me get this, I'm sorry fellas is two steps on the inside foot and then he is angling now depending on where we are on the field if we're outside the 20 yard line his angle once he hits that second step on the left leg is to the front pylon if we're inside the 20 fixing the score that landmark is the back pylon the R is taking three steps and then he is running uh, either a slant or a slant and sit. Depends on if it's man or zone. If it's zone, he is going to run the slant and sit. If it's man, he's going to keep on going. For the line now, we're running inside zone to the left. So, tackle, head up to outside, you're blocking on. We've got a shade, so we're double teaming this right here. Right here to the front side linebacker. Now we got a three technique backside, so we're double teaming with our eyes if I can get it, there we go, that looks beautiful, to the back. This is our read key. Now the way we do it is the end has to bite first in order for us to go to the next level. So we're reading this in, and the back is just opening and then coming straight downhill. And that's why I like the pistol, because when he was in the on the side and we were running our inside zone, he was hitting it too wide, and that was getting me mad. So instead of just keep fussing at him over and over again, I just say, Hey buddy, get behind the quarterback, take one six inch step to the right, and then just get immediately downhill. And that way we can hit it where I wanted it to hit when we're in the gun. So the quarterback, first off he's coming up, do we have pre-snap? Yes, then you don't care what's going on, the zone or the Y corner, you're just catch turning, and you're just throwing it out there. So that's the first thing. So again, you would, we would like to pair this with our runs because, I'm going to be honest, these guys don't like to block at all. So what's the point of yelling at them to block over and over again? Why don't we just make them run a route? What they've been, why they're on the field in the first place is to catch balls. Let them throw and run routes, throw it to them, and let them go instead of just wasting time, practice time, blocking. That's just what I think. Why? What do I know? I'm an idiot anyways. So the end. If the end just sits there, the quarterback hands the ball off, and now we've got a decent chance of scoring. If the end pulls, then the quarterback will run, and then he is keying this guy right here. Does this guy run off? Then just he can have his choice of either running or just tossing it out there. Does this guy come up and chase the quarterback? Then just dump it off right here. And the reason why you would tag the corner route with this is if your stud is on the outside, if you want to give him the ball. Because remember, most RPOs, they go to the slots. Well, sometimes we want to get these these outside receivers in involved in the RPO. So this is a good changeup for us, especially when we do have a stud right here. Defenses will be worried more about him, which can open up other guys to get involved in the play. So that is the second variation of our Y corner and Y stick play. The third variation that we like to do is we actually like to go empty. We like to go empty and we like to pair our quarterback run game out of empty with the Y stick. So when we go empty, we just call whatever our formation is. So let's say our normal formation is, is spread. Two by two, we just call it spread. And we want to go empty, then we would just say spread empty. And what the empty is, is it tells the running back he is going to the wide receiver side, the, the wise side. That is the fastest way I have come up with 
on how to go empty without bringing someone else in. Now y'all may have someone else, but that's what we do. All right, Coach Clay Baker, do you have any problems disciplining the running back's vision in the pistol? I've watched clinics where coaches complain about backs having a hard time reading blocks. Not really. Um, we rep this every day in the pistol, and I can kind of understand I know what you're talking about. They're talking about the inside zone and how you really don't get that cut back. I haven't found that yet. I find actually that it works best. And the way we structure it is when we run our inside zone, I want it to hit, excuse me, I want it to hit that backside A gap and cut back. If I plan on wanting to hit it that front side A gap and then bouncing, I'll call our one back power or our um, guard tackle pull, and they know that, okay, I'm hitting that front side A or I have the chance of bat hitting it to the front side. Zone, I want to hit it back side. Now, there will be times where when we're watching film and we're like, crap, there is that front side A gap is open, but about 80% of the time, where, where does it the inside zone hit? Back side. So that's why we went to the pistol. Coach Antoine, hopefully I'm saying that right. I need my receivers to be good blockers. I'm really big on that. It's the difference between 12-yard runs and 52-yard runs. I agree. It's just I've found that it's I would rather them catch. Now, for me, blocking-wise, if they, if they catch the ball down the field and then they just get in front of a guy, that's a block for me. That's fine. But I've noticed that when we play, and it's probably because I'm not a good coach when coaching them up on this, when we run screens out here, they get blown up really, really hard, unless this guy. I've got a decent guy. But everybody else on the outside, they're, really, they're not that physical. So why? my thinking is why make them that physical? Why not just have them run four or five yards down the field and turn around and catch it? It's the same thing as if I was going to throw a bubble screen and, and yell at them because they have to get me five yards. Just go ahead and put them five yards, turn around, just throw the ball. I, I don't do mid-zones. I only have three running plays. I have inside zone, um, one back power, and the guard tackle counter. I, I think it's easy. It allows the kids to play fast, and it helps me because I know, okay, I want to hit. They're over pursuing. Well, I'm gonna hit the zone so I can cut back. Or they're trying to stuff the backside. Well, then we're gonna hit it in the front by running guard tackle pull or the one back power. It it, it just works for me. So when we go empty, what I like to do, and this is what we usually get, is I like to hit up our one back power away from the stick side. So if we got Y stick, I want to run one back power to the left because this is what I'm looking for on the right. How do I feel about the gun counter tray? Um, I love it. I think that, I think that's the same thing we're talking about. Both guard and tackle, both pulling to the left and you read that backside in, I, I think that's a great play. Now, truth be told, I didn't want to put it in. My OL coach and my running backs coach, they they told me that we need to put it in and I listened to them. We kind of have a rule. It's it's us three for the most part. And if two out of the three vote, if we vote and two people agree with it, then it goes in. I think that's a diplomatic way of, of figuring stuff out offensively. And we only had two run plays, and they talked me into it, and that was our second best run for the rest of the year. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. I'm stupid for not listening to them sooner, and we're going to put that in. That is definitely going in for the for day one install. So we got our Y stick concept here. So at the wide receivers, they know Y stick. So backside, they've got the hitches. Front side, we have got our stick concept. Nothing changes except for the T. He is now running the shoot route. For the offensive lineman now, the only thing they are uh, running is the one back power to the left. And the way we do that is since we're running one back power to the left, left tackle, head up to outside, you're blocking on. You got a backside defender in the gap, backside, so you're blocking down. You were pulling around, and I know it's a five man box, so he's got this guy right here. Head up the outside, you're blocking this. If we can get it, there we go. And there we go. Now, quarterback, this is what I tell my quarterback. You're catching the ball, turning first. Do we have this pre-snap? Yes, catch, turn, and throw it out there. 
Do you not have it pre-snap? Then this is dead. Just let them run their play. And then you're playing the guy, playing the game off of this guy right here. If he sits on the stick route, you throw the flat. If he goes to the flat, you throw the stick. If this guy pushes over there, this backer right now, and you got two over two, then you pump fake, and now you are following the center straight up the hole. And I found that this is a great mix-up, or change-up, I'm sorry, for the quarterback, especially if you have a quarterback that can run a little bit. This is a great play to put in. And nothing new. You, you're combining something that you already do in the run game with something that you already do in the passing game. And the only person that needs to know what to do, actually, is the quarterback. And I know a lot of y'all saying that I don't have a quarterback that can throw it or make good decisions. If you rep it every day... And I actually call this in seven on seven sometimes when we're doing it because it's going to be a part and it is a part of our game plan and what we do. I'll call it in seven on seven and see what he does. Now, we both know that on seven on seven, <laughs> this guy's already 15, 20 yards back and he's shaded over to the right. So the quarterback's just going to catch turn, pump fake, and then just run. I don't care if they blow the whistle dead. The quarterback is getting reps running this play. All right, Coach Rob, hey, how's, how's it going? How's Canadian ball doing? I know that y'all have 12 men. I would love to get with you one day and see what y'all do. Maybe I can I can take some things that y'all do in Canada and put it down here, down south. I have that from empty, but run it as a curl, flat, or hank concept. Instead of hitching up over the center, I run the seam. Are you talking about the Y, Coach Antoine, or, or someone else? But... I mean, you can do anything with this. I love it. I, I like where your head's at because you can do a lot of stuff, especially if you have a quick game. You can combine your quick games with your runs, and the only thing that di is different is with the quarterback. He just needs to know what to do. Coach Diego, Deshaun Watson and Clemson ran a lot of empty RPO. Yes, and that's actually where I've gotten a lot of their ideas. My head coach used to play for Clemson right as they were starting to get good, so he's got good relationships with everybody there. And, and we have gotten a lot of great stuff with that. Okay, okay, I like it. So you run, is it the Y that you run on the seam? Or the, the tailback? Because that's not a bad idea right there. I might have to steal that. I'm, I'm actually going to steal that. Thank you, sir. So this is what we like to do in our, in our empty game. And we actually have a quarterback now coming up that is a little bit more of a runner. So we're going to have to put use more of these concepts to spread out the defense. Okay, all right. Well, I'm stealing that, Coach. Thank you very much. So another thing I like to do, and, I, and I've messed around with this just a little bit. Coach Gukin, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm a horrible. This is the reason why I teach math and I don't teach English. I'm going to call you Coach Steven. Uh, backside a gap blitz. What do you tell the center on this pool? So, what are you, are you talking about? This guy right here, closest to the F, or the backer? The center knows that when he's pulling, he's got anybody who's in the box first in the box. So, if this backer was right here, let me get him over. If this backer was in the box and we got two, well, then he would be pulling to this front side linebacker. Since this guy is out and the center can tell he's only got one in the box. This is the guy he's going for. If there's two in the box, he's going for the front side guy, and the quarterback better know that he's throwing it right here to this F because he's that's, that's where the grass is. Catch, turn, and just get it out there. Give me the five yards. I don't care. I will take five yards the entire length down the field to score. That's all I care about. I hope that answers your question. The F and the T would be hot. Yeah. See, I'm I'm not very good at teaching hots. I, I'm not. I. I have what I like to call the oh shits. So if the quarterback sees it, he just catch turns and throws it. That's why I have this built-in pre-snap. Essentially, this is our hot. But for if for a play to go and for me to teach, okay, if this guy goes F, then you have to adjust your route to run this. I'm not very good at it, so I'm, I don't even try. I would love some advice, though. All right. So the another way we do a variation and I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. I kind of stumbled upon it. I do it in the RPO game, but not in this, just a straight drop back. It's going three by one. 
So I'll move everybody over. And then just tag in the stick who I want to run. So we got the F over here. We got three by one. You most of the teams we do bring over here. And then we just call normal stick. So if we got Y stick, the Y is running the stick route. The F is running the flat. Everybody does that. But uh, last week, I decided that why don't when we get in a three by one, why don't I tag the F stick and have the Y run the flat? And boy, that blew the defense's minds because they're not used to it. So a variation that I'm going to start doing going into next season is going three by one and just tagging the F or the Y, depending on what who I want to get the ball to. So if the B is more out here over the Y, then I would call F stick, and the F would run the stick route, and now the Y is running the flat route. Now, as you can tell, the F's got the inside track, so he's just catch turning and just throwing it out there. I, when, that, when that happened last week, I thought I should get a Nobel Prize for being the smartest man ever to play football or to coach football. Coach John wants to know, how often do you pull the center? Uh, we pull the center a, a quite a bit, actually. And I know a lot of people are apprehensive about pulling the center. They, they say their guy's not fast enough. We rep it every day. Every single day, my OL coach, he's got a, a zone period, indie period, and then he's got a pulling period. And then we're, we're pulling and zoning every single day because, again, we only got three runs. And and a lot of the stuff is is really simple once you drill it over and over again. So in South Carolina, we've already gotten, we work with our guys right now since March, I think, or April. I don't know. I'm off with my days. I want to say it's March. We've gotten with our OL once a week, and we're now working, continuously working on the skip pulls over and over again. They actually get sick of it, and they want us to stop, but we're not. And our lot OL, the center, is actually getting pretty good at just He's, all he has to do is kind of just slip behind that guy and just move right on up to the to the next level. It's not anything dramatic or anything like that. You could call the play shown with a switch call. R runs a dig, Y runs a fade. Right now, yeah. And actually, Coach Patrick, that's what we're going to get into in a minute, a nice variation of the Y corner that does something similar, similar to that. What are you talking about, Coach Rob, for fall or spring ball? What do you mean? So, what I like to do right here is, again, backside. L's got a hitch. Now, I've done a couple of different things with the tailback. I have, on a couple occasions, he has just stepped up and blocked. Others, he just goes with the flat route. I don't know what to do right now. I would love some thoughts from you guys. What do you like to do when you have a stick concept to the right side? What do you do like to do with the tailback? Um, in South Carolina, Coach Rob, I got you. In South Carolina, uh, I want to say the first week of March, you can get with your guys and start kind of like installing stuff or just working with them a little bit. And what we do is we break it down. Each group one day a week we do something with them so like I've got the quarterbacks on Tuesday running backs Wednesday OL Thursday and the wide receivers are with the quarterbacks on Tuesday so we can kinda start doing a little bit of stuff and what I do is I go ahead and start putting in the routes and everything so when spring ball does come up which I think is first week of May I should know this it's coming up it's about two or three weeks by, by the time that comes in, I've already kind of, they should know what we're going to be putting in so I don't have to spend that much time going over that and we can just get right into the reps and getting reps every single day doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, I agree, Coach. Play action. Got to love it, especially with the Y cross. So the Y cross, I like that's my number one play action. We, we play action that. The linebackers step up. If we can't hit it deep, we're throwing it right over the middle. And I like where your head's at. So again, coaches, if, if you haven't, if you're just tuning in, my name's Coach Mackey. This is my channel. I like to talk about the spread offense. If you enjoy learning about the spread offense, then please subscribe. I put something out every uh, Saturday morning around 10.30 in the morning. 
Uh, if you like this and you're getting anything from it, please give me a thumbs up and please join the discussion. We've got some smart coaches in here that are going over some stuff. What I'm doing right now is I'm just going over five different ways. We have I use variations of the Y cross and the Y corner. That is our air raid quick game. That's essentially the only quick game that we do in the offense that we run. Um, Coach Adams, you like to swing the back to the single receiver and have a high-low concept and shake the X receiver. I'm guessing your X is my L. And the reason that, let me explain why I have this like this. L because he's on the left side. R because obviously he's on the R side, the right side. The Y, that's my, my homage to the air raid because, you know, the Y was so important. That's the one thing that the air raid did was keep the Y to the right side. I'm curious if any of y'all keep your Y on the right side, but that's for something different. And the F is for the our really fast guy. The fastest wide receiver we have, he goes to the F. So F is fast. That's that's how I think of it. So I, I've Coach Adams, I've done that. It's essentially a two-man snag. I think that's what you're talking about. But I've found that a lot of teams like to do this too high. And then they have this guy kind of cheated, so they've got three over two, and it never works for us. But I, what I'm thinking about doing is going and having a screen right here and just saying, okay, quarterback, can you throw the stick? Yeah, give it to him. If not, then take one, two, three, and just dump it off to the tailback and have him run a screen game. All right, so yes, wise to the right, Texas. Nice. We did that. We kept this guy right here on the right side the last four games. And this is the crazy thing. He had as many yards and touchdowns in four games staying on the right side that he did moving around the entire year. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to keep this guy on the right side and see what his stats are and how he can help us all of next year. See, I like it. I like it, Coach Adams. That's how y'all run this, the slip screen? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Is it? Do you have a way to, to rep that? Very good. Do do do. I mean, I know you have the screen. Period. But is that something you do? Do you use two backs when you rep it, or is it just one and then you're the coach and you make the quarterback decide? That's the one problem I have with the screens. Either ors. I want to rep the piss out of it, but I really don't know good drills. If you could send me a drill, I would I would be in your debt. All right. So and the last way that I like to run or a different variation of the Y corner is, and I got this from Clemson actually, is you run it as a fade with the Y. So you know the corner is he is running normal Y corner is four steps running the corner like that. R is taking three steps and then running the sit slant. But that, I think they call this fade excuse me, or the or the nine route, something like that. I can't really recall, but what they did I thought was genius, and it made me go, why haven't I thought of that? And I've seen this some on film with Baylor and everything, is they would have this guy run a fade over the, He was aiming for the, uh, the nearest shoulder of that corner, and then he was just running straight up the field. So now he has got this area. He winds up in the same spot as he would if he was running the corner route, but now he's just released outside and is running the fade. And all the R does is he still runs his three-step sit and slant. And the tailback is still running his shoot route. Now backside, they are still running their hitches. Nothing changes. The only thing that changes is for the Y, and he is running a fade now instead of the corner. Again, nothing changes for the quarterback either. Quarterback's looking at this pre-snap. Does he have any one of these? Yes, he's catch, turn, and throwing it. If not, he's coming back here, and he's still. Safety is inside the Y, so he's high-low in the corner. If the corner jumps on the flat, then he's just throwing this ball right here. If the corner bails, then he's just throwing the flat. And Clemson said they like to run this inside the 20, especially to their big receiver, Williams. I think that's what who is. Yeah, yeah, I'm an idiot. It is Williams. So they would run this with their with Williams and just throw it up their back corner of the end zone. Either he's making the play or it's going out of bounds. So that's something we're going to be putting in this spring, and I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. So there you have it, coaches. Those are the five different variations we have that we run with the Y uh, corner and the Y stick. If y'all have anything, I would love to hear from y'all. 
Uh, I love this community. We have I've gotten some great ideas from you guys, and I appreciate you emailing me and and twittering me with ideas. Um, if you don't already, please follow me on Twitter. I'm at Coach Mackey Jr. Uh, M C K I E J R, and y'all know how to spell Coach, obviously. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, again, I put something out every Saturday at 10:30 Eastern time in the morning. And uh, exciting news! I have I'm I'm one, about 95% sure I have saw another live stream set up for Friday. This Friday coming up at around six with a coach that runs the run and shoot. I know it's like getting a unicorn. Uh, I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna be asking him a bunch of questions on the run and shoot. How does he teach the seam route? How does he teach the choice? What's his practices like? Anything like that. So if you want to email me questions that you want me to ask him, go to my website ronmackeyfootball.com. Sign up for my um actually you can sign up for my free one back power rpo ebook and my email is on that right side go ahead and snag that send me any of your questions that you want i'm super excited about this not that many coaches coach the run and shoot so to finally have one that is also willing to talk about the run and shoot it's 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 amazing i know i know coach clay baker i'm i'm excited this is this is it's like Christmas for me. Coach Antoine, coach, I'm playing with a slow developing RPO. What do you think about going three by one, running a quarterback counter to the weak side? Okay, so it's to the left, and the guard will kick out and the running back lead. You talking about with the with the running back coach? So if I were let's draw this up real quick, because I'm not I'm stupid. So we got three by one. All right, so you are going to be running cornerback counter. So who are you pulling? Are you pulling the guard and the tackle or what? Coach Diego, coaches, we have a lot of kids who watch a lot of NFL and have a lot of trouble to catch and throw. Any suggested drills? Yes, settle up in noose. I don't know if you know what that is. What essentially is let's say that these backers are cones or, or trash cans. So you have trash cans, have them spread about five yards apart. Have all your wide receivers on one side. Have your quarterback right here. The quarterback just hits it, hits the ball, takes five steps. He's dropping back. This is about 50%. He's dropping back. One, two, three, four, five. Five steps. He's planting. While the quarterback is doing that, the wide receivers are working on their releases. So I have my guys, we always want to release outside. So they're going to be going outside, inside, outside, dipping and ripping, and then they're just jogging in place. Just jogging in place, 50% till they get to the other trash can. Then they're putting their foot in the ground and then stepping forward and just showing hands. And they want to, and it's called settle up because the guys are settling up in that void and noose because they are making a noose with their hands and they're showing it to the quarterback just like this. And the quarterback, you can have him. What I like to do is I like to go through whatever my progressions are for the routes that we're doing for that day. So let's say we're going over the Y cross. So the wide receivers are going across, 50%, planting, throwing their hands. My quarterback, after he takes his five-step drop, he's hitching up, and he is saying out loud the progressions to the Y cross. So he's going vertical, out, cross, in, back. And then after that, he is throwing it to the guy that's settling up and has his hands out. And the guy that just has his hands out, he, the wide receiver, he catches it. Whichever side the quarterback throws it to, that's the side. So if he throws it to the left, he's catching it, and he's turning it to the left. If the quarterback throws and hits me on the right side, then I'm going to catch it on my right side. I'm going to turn to my right, and then I'm just going to sprint five yards. Also, have your kids do this. Now, you may think it's stupid, but I promise you, even Clemson, I went to some of their practices. Their uh, Coach Scott has their guys do this. When the wide receivers catch the ball, they have to tell you as they're tucking it nice and secure whether the spaces are showing or the laces. And the reason why you want to do that is because it forces the kids to look at the ball the whole way through and you're over-exaggerating, catching and putting it away, keeping your eyes on the ball. 
That's the one drill. If I had to do one drill and only one drill, that is the drill we do every day. And since we implemented that at the school I'm at now, our drops have been have dropped. <laughs> our drops have decreased about 75 percent. All right, let me let me see. Uh, Coach Clay Baker, you did get a unicorn with a pot of gold, too. I know, man. I'm excited. If you got any questions, email me. I will be glad to ask him. He's. I'm, I told him to go ahead, if we're actually doing this, to bring a cot because I'm not going anywhere. I have about 15 years of questions that I want to ask. Coach Adams, why run Hitch's backside of why stick instead of slants? Um, Coach Adams, because I'm not a <laughs> – I don't know how to coach that that well. I, I've never actually gotten it. Um, I think there's too many moving parts with the slants where the quarterback has to make sure he's putting it in front of the wide receiver so he runs through it. And then I'm also afraid, what if the quarterback leads too much? If we got slants coming this way, what if he leads too much and that backer gets in the way and just decapitates my wide receiver? I don't have that that many wide receivers to spare. But if you run hitches, then it's a stationary target. The guy's just running five yards, turn around, throwing up hands, and it goes back to, since he's coming up and throwing up hands, that settle up a noose drill. So the quarterback's just doing his catch turn and just throwing it out there. It's nice and simple. We rep it every day. Coach Amar, the past season when we were a spread team, the corner route was part of our five-step game. We ran mirror concepts to both sides with the ability to add tags. We paired the corner up with a five-yard in. Yeah, I like that. Uh, kind of smash concept. Did you roll out to it? Because I know a lot of coaches like to roll out to the smash and throw it because it makes it easier. I'm not a big fan of the rollout because I, I'm a air raid purist. But coach guard and tackle, base the tackle. Oh, it's okay. So you're you're bringing him across, basing him, pulling, and the quarterback's getting there. I like it. I'm guessing your tailback is on this side, so he's going here and pulling it around. I like that. I like it. What do you do backside? I know some people like to fake this so he can kick out the end and then bring him around and the quarterback will run. Have you thought about that? Coach Diego, I hope. I'm, I'm telling you, if you do that every day, five minutes a day, you will catch. Your, your drop balls will go down very fast. All right. Well, coaches, I appreciate it. This has been fun. Um, next time. I like to, I'm going to start doing this probably every other Sunday. If there's any questions you want, again, please email me, uh, message me on Twitter, put a, leave a comment in the comments below, anything. Thank you all for joining me. And until next week, coaches, remember, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun. Have a great night.